Hi. Welcome. My name is Chris Ford. I'm with the Des Moines Music Coalition. We're the nonprofit group that's organizing this festival out here. I hope you have a lot of fun. It's going to be great. Uh, this year we're trying something that we haven't got to do before, but we're really excited about it. Thank you for coming out if you're here for it. Uh, if you're not, then you are now. Uh, what we're doing here is a panel as part of our series called Music University. We want to have free talks about music and about the music business for people that are interested in uh, you know, pursuing a career and that sort of thing. Or just want to know a little bit more about it so we can have a conversation and have a little fun. And also, we want to share with you people that live and work in our community that work in the music industry. So today, what we have here is a really cool conversation that we're going to utilize uh, somebody that's in town for the, to uh, for the festival and a few people that live and work right here in town in the music business. Uh, I do have one announcement. Uh, we, one thing I guess about touring is sometimes things go wrong and things break down and you don't show up to where you're supposed to be on time. So uh, Roster McCabe is not here, but they are going to be playing the festival tonight, uh, but they are not here for this panel. But uh, I will introduce our moderator and he will introduce our other two fine, fine guests. Okay, so moderating here today a discussion uh, behind the scenes of touring with the bands of 8035 is Mark Hogan. Now Mark has, I have this here, he's a uh, writer and contributor to Pitchfork.com, Spin, also eMusic, Salon, Playboy, uh, and a number of other uh, music magazines and things like that. Lots of important things. Uh, I asked him if he ever wrote for Rolling Stone, and he said, no, not Rolling Stone, and uh, our guest Patrick said they tried to hire him, but he was too good for that. It's true. So, true. True story. Uh, also, the New York Times uh, said about Mark that, uh, what was it again? He, he goes over the top to very nice effect? Something like, Something that. like that. All right. Look it up. The New York Times. Yeah. They, they like Mark. Okay. So, without further ado, uh, winner of numerous awards and general uh, purveyor of awesomeness, Mark Hogan. Oh, my God. Thank you for that. Very generous introduction. I don't think I've won any awards, but um, yeah, really happy to, really happy to be here. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm here with, with, uh, with Tom Carlson, who uh, is tour manager for David Byrne and St. Vincent. Um, you know, he's worked with uh, basically I mean, some really big acts too. I mean, going back, Van Halen you worked with, Allman Brothers, uh, uh, Andrew Bird, um, Stars, which is a really good Canadian band, uh, 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 Dosh you worked with, right? Um, it's a really cool act on Antigon, right? Yeah, he's on Antigon, wasn't it? But anyway, so yeah, Tom's worked with a whole bunch of cool people, and he is uh, he, he went to Roosevelt High School right here in Des Moines. So, and then, um, and then uh, Tate Fleming uh, lives right here in Des Moines. Um, he's in the band Poison Control Center. He's performing tomorrow at noon uh, um, with, with his uh, new solo project, Gloom Balloon. Um, he's toured with lots of people over the, over the years. Uh, how many shows did you play on your never-ending tour, Pat? Uh, 284 shows in 13 months and put out two albums. So, yeah, basically he yeah, works non-stop. Oh, um, You know, works non-stop to make, to make music and, and, you know, has done it you know, on the kind of DIY, uh, you know, level of it. So, um, uh, basically, hopefully they'll talk a lot more than I will. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we're here just trying to talk to people about, you know, who are in small bands, maybe, who, you know, have played some shows and might want to do some more touring, you know, kind of some insights on how they can have their tours uh, be successful. So, uh, I guess, you know, Tom, I mean, um, you know, uh, you know, when and why should a band, you know, start thinking about touring? You know, at, w at what point is it appropriate for them to start trying to, you know, really get out there on the road? Um, I, maybe Patrick would weigh in on this as well, but I would say, uh, who am I quoting? Am I quoting? Uh, get in the van. Like, you should just go do it. You should try it, and you should borrow some money if you have to. You should obviously try to make your own money, but get out there and, and give it a shot. I think it's an awesome way to learn how to play shows and play more shows and sell merch and build your business. So yeah, I'd say whenever you can, as soon as you can. Yeah. If, yeah, if you can get a grant from your parents to do it. <laughs> I never I never did that, but uh, I think everything you need to know about running a successful business or a successful life you can learn on the road through rock and roll. So but I mean but Pat, I mean it's pretty pretty tough out there, right? I mean how do you kinda like you know, budget 
budget it so that you don't go broke if you don't have you know a, a grant from your your parents? Uh, well, the Boyd's Control Center, uh, we have never lost money on tour. And the one thing that we started doing right away from day one on our first we, well, we did a lot of weekends before I ever went on a tour. Being from Iowa, you can do that real easy to go to big towns so like Minneapolis, Kansas City, Omaha, Chicago. Uh, but we did a five dollar a day food budget out of the band fund for each member. So technically, the band only had to spend gas money and five dollars a day. Five dollars a day. Five dollars a day to live off of. So if you were gonna spend more than that five dollars a day, it's gonna come out of your own pocket. And uh, in Voice Control Center, all the money that the band makes goes in, back into the band fund. So out of the 14 years that I've been in the Voice Control Center, I've never made any money. But our band bank account it has more money than my personal bank account does. <laughs> Start from the $5 a day. And that's a lot of ramen, I think. Like $5 a day is yeah. like a it's lot of if you're vegan, easy to eat food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did Van Halen do it that way too, or? Uh, no. <laughs> no, no, that was a really different thing, and there's accountants and weird people, and that's not the way to do a tour. Right? <laughs> You're gonna do it. So. Well, I, mean, I guess so. I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know if people really know like what a tour manager does. I mean, how does it? Like you know, how do you start planning a tour? I guess what, what's the first thing you do when you're when you know David Byrne gives you a call and says we're, we're planning a tour? You know what what happens? Uh, and it depends on the level uh, at which you're touring, but uh, with with this tour specifically, I start with uh, with hotels and start figuring out where we're going to stay when we're traveling places. Uh, and it depends. Honestly, you would start there, and you would start by finding we, we travel in tour buses. Uh, and those are also something that uh, get scarce very quickly, especially in the summer when a lot of people are out traveling around. So. As soon as I have kind of a uh, routing, you know, there's a booking agent that would normally hand me kind of like, here's where we're almost likely, surely going to play, and that changes a little bit. So then from there you start kind of getting flights and hotels and tour buses and then sound gear and lighting and all that stuff. To do. Um, yeah, what separates? I mean, how do you get from like you know the, the level you know to that next level where you have a, a touring manager and you know, booking agent? I mean, how does a band go from being you know uh, just playing a few shows in Iowa to you know how does that process work? Uh, I mean, I, and I think Patrick can weigh in on it here as well. But I mean, I think uh, touring is something you do and you you you, you do a lot of, uh, and you you know again you learn. Uh, more the more you do it, uh, and you start to bring people into this, this team you're creating. Not just the band, but you do some shows and you have some people come out, so you uh, maybe the next step you want to take is a booking agent if you feel like you could do better shows in other rooms and, and more and diversify your markets a little bit. And from there then, uh, a manager, or maybe you do a manager first and then you have a booking agent. Or maybe that's the same person. There's a number of different ways to do that. Um, so from there, you know, you kind of, you. You start building budgets, and you, you look at trying not to lose any money when you're out on tour. And you, you bolster your ticket sales by ideally with selling some posters and some t-shirts and CDs and whatever you can. I don't know, underwear, whatever you like, you know, whatever people want to buy, you know, it's cool. Uh, and then, you know, from there, I, I'd say the tour manager comes in at some point down the road if there are ways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Patrick? Uh, yeah, I think um, that's a great point. I think uh, you kind of have to earn a tour manager or a booking agent, and the way to do it, I guess, is to go out on tour, book your own tour, and then everybody in the band be your own tour manager. It's kind of the cool thing about being in a, in a band of, with four different people, is that uh, when, you're, when you're playing shows locally and stuff, it's always it's usually just like one guy or one gal who's kind of like booking the shows or, or setting up or making posters or something like that. When you're in the van, uh, it's a lot easier to delegate certain tasks, so in our band, Somebody uh, was doing all the books, like doing, figure out how much money we need to make to make gas and to make, uh, you know, when we, when we were, last time we went on tour we had $10 a day, so we, you know, all that stuff is budgeted out. And then there's somebody who's dealing with the Facebook page while you're on the road, and there's somebody who's talking to the booking agent, and somebody who's advancing the shows and stuff. So you kind of get to play all the roles. Uh, once you've done that a little bit, and you've been on tour, and you've played the role booking agent, tour manager, band, of, uh, you know, it, it, it helps. And uh, with that being said, when you're at a smaller level, you kind of just need to be nice to everybody. I think I just read something recently about John Vanderslice wrote 
about being on tour that rock and roll musicians are now the nicest people in the world because they have to be because they're they need places to stay they need to sell albums and they need to survive on the road so they are now the nicest people in the world so if you need a friend be a friend with a rock and roller they're gonna be nice they're gonna be nice <laughs> i mean and patrick made some great points there i think about starting your business i think uh i, I manage a couple of bands as well and one thing I keep telling them, uh, I have a band that's out on tour uh, right now, and uh, what I'm trying to instill in them is the first time they've, they've been out on tour, a headline tour, but it's, it is so worthwhile to learn how to book a show, to learn how to like write your merch down that you've sold in a spreadsheet, and then see what you've sold. And then all of a sudden you do a couple tours and you know, oh man, we sold all these shirts in Omaha. Maybe if we go back there, we'll sell a bunch more so we can plan to bring some extra ones to Omaha. But, but knowing all the different jobs by doing them and, and messing them up, and doing them wrong, and getting ripped off by a venue because you didn't know how to settle a show, that's all part of the process. And then when you go to bring people into your group, like a booking agent, you're that much more powerful in that you know how to do their job at least a little bit. And so you can tell if they suck at it or if they're great at it, you know, it just it gives you so many more tools, you know, so yeah, you made a great point. You're a much bigger asset to like a, a much bigger asset to a booking agent or a record label or uh, anything, a manager, if you know how to do everything. So as long as you're renaissance men and women in the field of rock and roll, then you're going to be just fine. And you're going to have people who want to work with you because they know that you know how hard it is. So yeah, so, so yeah, so do it all yourself first, I think seems to be the, the, the message. And um, I think John Vanderslice was talking about how the guy from Third Eye Blind was a big jerk, so that's yes. kind of the, so everybody yes. knows apparently yes. that guy's a big jerk, but, but um, <laughs> you're, you're talking about- the rest about, of the guys whose band was super nice. Right, right, they were all really nice, that's true, that's important, that's important to point out, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. gonna be a but, real yeah. rock star. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, Third Eye Blind, but, um, uh, you, you were talking about routing earlier, and you guys probably both have pretty, you know, uh, you know, diverse, um, you know, experiences of, uh, with routing. You, you know, you're doing these these big David Byrne, St. Vincent shows, and you've played all these small, you know, clubs all across the country. Uh, what are some tips for planning a route for for people's tours? Um, my 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 thing is, our band we don't like to drive more than three hours in a day. Uh, we like to get to a town and hang out and. Uh, not spend money, but we like to not have to be, we don't play as good a show as if we've been in the band for seven hours. So if you want to take a tour to New York City from Des Moines, don't try to do it in eight days. Like, try to do it in 20 days. And cutting that 20 hour drive down to you know two hours a day, two hours a day there and back, uh, you're gonna make more money and you're gonna be way less stressed. Because being in a band is kind of stressful and it costs money while you're in there. So if, that's why being uh, from Des Moines or Iowa is the best place in the world to be a touring band because you can do a two week tour and never be as far away as you know five hours away from Des Moines. You're playing college towns and big cities, that's the way to go, I think. That's, that's amazing, yeah. I mean, I, well, with, with the guys that are out on the road right now, uh, my, it, I kind of helped to book some of the shows even though I don't really know how to book shows, but it was a great learning process. Uh, but my, my rule was not more than six hours to get to a place, which is a long way. And like, Patrick's totally right. If you wanna figure out a way to like break your band up before you even get home, <laughs> sit in the van for hours at a time and like you know, just put people against each other all day. You know, it can be stressful. So like you wanna, you wanna keep the drive short uh, and you wanna, you know, the, the, the farther you drive, the more gas you're spending. And nowadays it's really expensive. So uh, three hours is probably a really great rule. <laughs> How, how long should there should, should a band's first tour be? You know, like I mean, how, you know, how many weeks or days or? I, I would shoot for between 15 and 20 days, and always I say the first tour should be all places you can get back to over a weekend. So if you want to say like, oh, we just played down in Kansas City or Columbia, Missouri, I know I can get there on a Friday and Saturday night and be back. Or Chicago, uh, Minneapolis, Madison. From here, you know, Omaha, Sioux Falls. These are all places that have bands, and it's much better to build an audience. We, you know, Poison Control Center played probably 25 shows in Minneapolis before we ever went on a tour, and so we had, you know, friends move up to Minneapolis and build a little audience there. You know, you're gonna have some people at your show, which is always nice. Yeah, I mean, I'd say, uh, yeah, 20 days is probably good. I mean. You you want to start early when you're looking at these things too, so you have these options. I mean, Iowa is a great place in that 
there's so many options right around here that you can get to easily. And that's amazing, because, uh, you know, trying to start a tour in New York, like everything is west, and you're kind of limited to all these little markets you can get out of New York to play. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, the, the later you start booking a tour, the, the fewer options you have, because then you start booking up, and then you're forced to drive farther to find a place to fit your gear into a show. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, you mentioned uh, in Minneapolis. I mean, how do you, uh, when you go to some city where you, you've never played before, I mean, how do you kind of build up having, you know, having people come out to see you? I mean, do you just kind of hope to play? Do you, do you plan to play some, some towns you have friends in, or, or is it just kind of, sometimes you just roll in and sure, you know, well, hope? On our last tour, you know, we played lots of towns that we'd never played before. Uh, but the cool thing about, you know, there's a lot of things I don't like about the world of the internet with music. But there's one good thing about it, and that's like everybody's kind of got an equal playing field or something in the sense of, let's say Mark writes a good review about you on Pitchfork or something, and there's going to be some people at your show, even if you don't know anybody yet. She's my friend, so I wouldn't write it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would only slam. Thanks a lot, I would only slam. Uh, no, but you know, if it happens, or if you get a little press, or if you're working hard, and you know, you do have a friend in that town, you know, that's always nice, but. I think those are the most exciting times is when you're going into a town that you don't know anybody and at the end of the night uh, somebody's letting you sleep on their floor whether it's a band or somebody from the venue and you you gain so many lifelong friends. I, I always say that the majority of my friends who don't live in my hometown I've met through touring and it's awesome. And on the 13 month tour that we did, we only stayed in a hotel under 10 times and some of those were provided by venues and like that and that's that's magical because you're just like getting to hang out with new people every night and sometimes the floors are pretty dirty for a germaphobe <laughs> but sometimes they're nice too so. lots of cat hair yeah i mean and uh like patrick said i think uh, being nice is super important and you know you roll into a venue and you guys treat everybody with respect and and you're excited to be there and people pick up on that and all of a sudden you have some people offering you places to stay you know which is great food also food is good you know what are some tips for you know surviving and staying happy on the road? I mean, you know, you've seen from various tours you've managed, or you know, Pat, you've seen from me on tour. You know, how do people stay sane and, and you know, get along on all those weeks? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I think uh, I certainly learned in like the, I think I've been touring for ten years or something, but uh, it's super easy to go out and get drunk every night and have fun, and that's really cool for a while and blah blah blah. Uh, but a much more sustainable way to tour is to take care of yourself and like give everybody a little space and try to find you know an activity that you like to do, a hobby, or you read books on the road, or you like to go biking, or whatever. But let everybody kind of do their thing, little space, and then yeah, don't beat yourselves up too much when you're out there. It's it's a long tour. Uh, yeah, the one thing I would say is you know you're on the same team if you're in a band. You know if you're so if you're if you're touring by yourself, it's a different thing. You're kind of you are your team. But when you're a band, you know, like, we treat our band like family, you know, like, we care about each other more than anything else, and uh, when you're out there and you guys just treat each other with respect, it's going to be go a long ways. And I think whether there's five people in the audience or there's a hundred, if you play great every night or if you, you know, put on the best performance you can possibly put on in all of the circumstances, the night is going to feel like a good night, whether there's five people there or a hundred people there. It's like if you if you play good, you feel good. So just and venues will always have you back. That's the one thing I, that we learned. Even if there was five people there, if you played like there was fifty people there and you were sweating and you treated everybody with respect, you learned the sound person's name, you learned the bartender's name, you tipped them occasionally. Uh, they'll always have you back, even if there was only five people there, because you, they they become fans of your band just because of your work ethic. Yeah, that's, that's great. I mean, so I mean, what are some things that you know bands should make sure that they've got figured out with like the venue or promoter before they go on the road? Um, I, I I go through a whole advanced process, whether it's uh, whether we're playing festivals like this with David Byrne, or it's uh, the band California Man, uh, California Wives, who's playing at Vaudeville Muse next week, right? Awesome. Same. It doesn't matter. You always want to get uh, you reach out to people in advance. They usually reach out a month in advance, and you just want to confirm where you're parking. Uh, do we get any food? Do we get some drink tickets? What time is sound check? What time is the show? Who else is playing? Is there laundry? I, uh, 
couple of uh, guest list. How many guest list tickets? You know, just all that little stuff you want to you kind of get down. Ideally, these days you want to get it down in an email, so then you have that to show somebody if you show up. Uh, and it's not the case. Also, of course, what the settlement terms are, what you're getting paid, and how. And uh, yeah, I mean, just get all that stuff out in a discussion beforehand. That way, you don't roll in kind of ignorant to your to your shows every day. Awesome, Chris. Are we? Is it time for for questions from the, the audience? Is that we? Yeah, yeah. I think we we should open it up and, and there, unless there's anything else you definitely want to ask yourself. No, no, no. I, I'm really curious to hear everybody's questions. Really. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Tom, I think Patrick probably has a different. Uh, oh yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. It's, sorry. It's, it's the exact same no, thing. Yeah, here. exact same thing. On smaller level, sending posters, just making sure that you do everything you can possibly do, of uh, contacting all the local press in a town and making sure your posters get there because you know like. It's tough because sometimes you send posters out and they're not hung up when you get there and it's kind of frustrating, but at least you did your part to make sure that pro part of the process happens. So, and just being very communicative. And that's one thing about doing things yourself uh, before you get a booking agent or something or trying to have your friend do a booking, is you know what your deal is at the end of the night. You know if you're getting drink tickets because you're the one who set it up. So. Cool. Yeah. Great. Okay. okay. Cool. So far, so good. We're going to do some questions now. We've got about 10 minutes for it. What this is, is if you're just a curious fan, um, a eccentric weirdo, or somebody who actually could use this answer to uh, <laughs> apply it, you can ask it. It doesn't matter. Uh, if you have any question that you'd like to ask either of these guys, including Mark, you can. What I'd ask is that if you could come up here to use the mic, because we'd like for the video for people that aren't here to be able to hear it. So. I'm a young, younger musician, and I was just wondering, I'm still in school, and how would you guys balance school, music, life, and all the different things like that? And then when you get older, how do you balance going on tours and what you do with your life? Uh, uh, I was in a high school band, and it was the, you know, we were the type of, we were from small town in northwest Iowa, so we maybe played once a month, maybe once every two months, and we made we, I learned a lot about putting on shows in those in those shows because we made sure that every one of those shows that we'd have in two months was going to be like the biggest blowout of this town. And so a lot of times when you're in high school, it's hard to play a lot. Uh, but 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 learning all these things, booking your own shows, and making sure that it's an event uh, is a huge thing. As far as like of uh, juggling. Uh, school and shows, you're in a great town that supports local music, uh, whether it's Vaudeville Muse or Woolies or The Gas Lamp. They will have all ages shows for you. I know they have to be before nine, but keep playing them and we'll get that law change that we can have people, all ages people, after nine o'clock. Um, another thing, as far as juggling life goes, just remember what's most important to you. And, uh, you know, I've been married for six years and was on the road, you know, for pretty much two years of that six years of marriage and uh, it's good to have a good supporting team at home or whatever and just make sure that uh, your band is friends first and you know like I'm in a band my high school band still never broke up so I've never been in a band that's broke up because you just got to take care of each other so that's yeah I don't know if that answers the question uh, yeah I mean uh, play as many shows as you can take whatever opportunities you can when you're in school and if it means you got to stay out late and get up early, that's probably okay. You're young and you can do that, you know? Um, and you should do that. It's it's good for you, I think. Uh, and then in terms of life, yeah, I think Patrick's totally right. Uh, you just have to prioritize. Uh, you have a job at home that makes you money. If you're bartending, if you're working at a law firm, whatever it is you do, and if they're not willing to give you some flexibility to go out and, and tackle your music career, then maybe that's not the job you want to keep when you're at home. And maybe you need a different job when you're at home, or not a job when you're at home, if you can get away with that, you know? But it's, it's all a matter of your priorities, and what is most important to you. And I think nowadays, nowadays, there's a lot of people who work from the road, you know? Uh, like, Mark works on a computer all day, I used to work on a computer all day, you probably work on a computer all day, and Chris works on a computer all day, and he's going on a tour, in a couple weeks, and he's going to be working from the road. You know, there's a lot of downtime on tour too, especially if you're only driving a couple hours a day. You get into a coffee shop, and you can put in three or four hours of work. You can still make a little paycheck at home. Make sure your rent's paid while you're out living your dream. There might be somebody on tour working from the road in here right now, possibly. I'm not sure. Do we have any other questions at all? Uh, we have time for one more question. If anybody has.
burning question, educational, or just wants to ask Patrick how he does eat vegan on the road indeed. That's an optional question. But if not, then we're going to finish it up then. All right. Thank so, you, Original Cafe. <laughs> yes, Thank we'd you like to. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. So the reason Patrick made me look bad by saying thank you to them first is because he knows how to be nice on the road. So to sum it up, be nice, buy your idol a beer, and uh, what was the other thing? Tip. tip. Yeah, tip if you can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, on behalf of the Des Moines Music Coalition, I'd like to thank Patrick Tate Fleming, Tom Carlson, and Mark Hogan for taking time out of their schedules, who are, they're all involved with this event in some way, uh, to do this here for free. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you have any other questions, that you could just accost them on their way out of the door. All right. Thank you. Please give them a round of applause. Woo. And enjoy the festival. Actually, that's a good point. Yeah. Patrick reminded me because, again, uh, we are going to have a full all-day conference in the vein of this with a bunch of guests from all around the country on October 19th at Drake University. Um, I can't announce our keynote speaker yet, but we're bringing in some really exciting uh, people with a lot of experience and resources to come in from all over. Uh, so, like this, but times, uh, times uh, many times, hopefully. So October 19th, we'll hope, hope you will all come out. Thank you. Uh, so you attended the Music University event here at 8035. Uh, what do you think? I thought it was really cool. It was great to see, see the different David Burns manager and then the other musicians and then Tom and Andy. It was good. Cool. So how old are you? How long have you been playing in a band? 14 and then I've been playing since I was about 7 and then just like playing music with others for about 3 years. Cool. So I assume you're looking maybe interested in being able to play out on the road at some point. What What are some things you felt like you learned today that maybe would help? Being nice. <laughs> being nice to people is always really, really good. Um, being Iowan is apparently very good too. Yeah. Um, and it's good to make sure, and don't like wear yourself out. Make sure you know what you're going to do when, and make sure you have break time and you're not just go, 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 because you might wear yourself out and make a bad show and leave a bad impression. Cool. So after coming and uh, attending this event, do you, do you feel more confident about going on tour? Do you think you're definitely going to go on tour one day? I mean, it'll, it depends on how it all works out, but it, it definitely got me more interested in the business side as well, because uh, David Burns' manager, just, that seems really interesting to me as well. But yeah, business, I think it'd be interesting to mix business and music and see how that goes, and learning how to do not only play, but also manage and like teach and all the different things that you can do just to help yourself keep going. Cool. Thanks, Donald. Thank you. Dylan Sires and Neighbors, guys. Thanks for coming out. I know you're playing 8035, which is incredible, but you made a little time to check out the Music University event with Tom, David Burns, core manager. Uh, what'd you think? Well, you learn a lot. There's a lot of stuff you don't think about when you're going to book shows or you're going to tour. Or, and it's just good to hear from other people to maybe reinforce things that you had already thought but didn't know or not. And uh, and just and if you didn't know before, you know now. So you yep, these are the guys to take notes on too. So. Oh yeah. So do you, are you are you guys planning on touring anytime soon? Anything yeah, in, here that you would uh, October? Yep, in October. October. So any uh, any tips that you're planning on using that you didn't know before, maybe? You know, we always try to be as nice and as uh, humble as possible in everything that we do, and and so it's good to hear. You know, today they talked about being nice. We've always believed in that, so it was nice. To you know, have that reinforced to us that, you know, just being happy to be on the road, rocking and rolling, as Pat would say. Awesome. Well, guys, have a good show tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you so much for playing our fest. Thanks for having us. Bring it on.